Thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for all the blessings, for whatever's going on. We just put it in your hands. We thank you for John hanging around as long as he did. And as he leaves, Lord, I pray that you just watch over him, keep tabs on all his vehicles, getting back up, just take care of his mom and dad. We appreciate that. And above all, I pray that you be with the ones that are traveling, Lord, be it Lois or whatever. Just watch over them, get them back to us safely. And for the ones that are on the list that are wrestling with some kind of cancer or anything else, we just put put them all in your hands and bring them to our mind when it's necessary to live the prayer. As we study your word today, Lord, I pray that you just be involved in it 100%. Keep all of the opinions out of it. Work with the scripture that you put in our minds. And in doing so, we will have all the truth, not just a piece of it. We thank you for all of that in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, got your verse. <coughs> of an interesting deal. Um, turn to the Corinthians and look at this stuff ahead of it, if you would. Now, that's kind of general. The whole Bible that goes before that ahead of it. What did you have in mind? That's okay. Go to, go to Corinthians. I don't even have my interlinear, so I have to worry about it. Scott can take care of that. Allie has her. Do you want it? That's okay. I'll get it. This one still works. First or second Corinthians? First Corinthians 16, 13. All right, that's what your verse is. All right, so that you have some context for it. Okay. Now, you can see the, mine has, uh, the MacArthur Bible has the, the little bit of stuff in front of it. it talks about personal plans when, when, Paul's passing through Macedonia. He's going to go through Ephesus and do Pentecost. He's talking about Timothy, and then he comes to this. But in verse 12, he says, Now concerning your brother Apollos, I strongly urge him to come to you with, with the brethren. He was quite unwilling to come at this time. However, he will come when he is at his convenient time. So it got something that somebody wanted somebody to do, and there was a problem in Apollos' scheduling or whatever. Could have been in his head, could have been on paper. Don't, they don't tell you. But he's telling him something in final exhortations to him. He says, now watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave. Be strong. And in 14 says, let all that you do be done with love. So that's 13 and 14. Now, old school has it written the way you see it on your paper. All right? The old, saint, the, the, the old version of it. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. All right. Quit was a judicial term in the olden days. Used to say somebody was going to have something done to deliver them from something. That was the physical sense. It went to a spiritual or a religious connotation after that because of the way that things were shaking out in the law. They could do it concerning spiritual things. All right, And that's why they put it like that. Watch, the term that they use for the first one there, is physically to refrain from sleep. All right? Transfer to spiritual, moral, religious sphere, spiritual alertness. And this is how it's impressed upon us because it is not the word that is normally used for this. And it is the duty of alertness as opposed to slack or sleepy spirit. In other words, your discernment needs to be on duty all the time. All right? You don't get a pass. Um, anybody in here duck hunt? Anybody ever duck hunt? No. Any? Okay. okay. All right. When you're duck hunting, you don't look at the ground. What are you looking for? Ducks. Okay, there we go. She's on top of this, all right? How are you looking for them? You're not looking here. You're looking up here. You cannot ever take your eyes off the sky if you actually want to take something home. Why? Because in all honesty, there is no way to know where they're going to come from, how fast they're going to be coming, the level at which they're coming, and how many of them are coming. So you are, you, from the moment 
the sun starts to break, you are constantly head on a pivot, sweeping around out of your duck blind, looking for whatever's coming. That isn't the only part. You have got to be able to identify what's coming. <coughs> you have to know the silhouette. If it's a hood of merganser and you can't shoot them, you better know the silhouette because if you come out of there with one, you're, you're, you didn't do your job. You've done something that is improper. Okay. What kind of a duck was that word you just used? Hooded merganser. Have you ever gone through the cut through on, on the Cape? What's that little wiggle road past Blue Origin? This winter when you go through from November, no, December to February, look in that land and that little ditch along that pond or whatever. Look there, you will find usually two or three different sets of hooded mergansers. They like dipping in that particular stuff. And when you look at them, they will not look they will not look fancy to you at all because as they're sitting there, it's just a head like this. Okay? And you've got this type of deal here. But when you stop to look at them, they notice you. What happens to them is they have this is all white in here where their eyes are. It's a hood that stands up and it is the most, they are dark green with black head with a white epaulette in the inside of that fan when they tip their head up. It is a gorgeous bird, but you can only hunt them now. One of them, you're only allowed to shoot one. So if you don't know what you're doing and you're not paying attention, you're going to bust the wrong bird. You're going to hit. Well, you don't want to be shooting off the road anyway. That probably would get you arrested real quick. Yes, ma'am. So how do you learn the silhouettes? Are you looking at pictures and say this is a uh, answer? Or you can learn by pictures, you? but you're going to learn by doing. I went to the marsh and learned. So when you pick them up and they got the hood and, and, and you. Oops, just yeah, yeah, because when they're flying, that hood's not standing, okay? So you have to know the silhouette. Same thing with when Satan's throwing something at you. You need to know what it's going to look like. That's, your, that's what you're watching for. You're looking for something that may cause you to doubt something. You may have a problem with how somebody's doing something and you don't know why. That's what they're wondering. That's what this is all about. This is telling him how to conduct himself when there's somebody there that doesn't have a greater experiential knowledge than you. That's how that deal works. All right? Now, this is a caution against anxiety. you know how many Christians I hear use the word worry? They try to dress it up and call it concern. Okay? You know what my book says? Be anxious for nothing. Bingo. It also teaches that worry is a sin. There you go. Uh -oh. A lot of people don't, <laughs> realize, <laughs> lot of people don't realize. And where are you worrying? Are you worrying out in public? No, you're worrying in your head. So, what I'm saying is, this is the type of thing that they're speaking of here. Now, once you're watching, now you've got to stay still. You've got to stand fast. And that's what they're talking about here, standing fast. This particular instance, it's stand fast in the faith. All right? And the problem that they have is you have to determine what kind of faith it is. Since there are different connotations with that. This is his adherence to doctrine. All right? You need to know doctrine to stand firm in it. Uh, how many of you know why Noah had to get on the ark? I told him to. God told him to. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things prior to that he had done and believed and created. A boat, gathered up animals, got food together. All of it was for naught if he didn't listen to him when he says, Oh, by the way, Noah, today's the day you get on the boat. Okay, you've got to consistently follow the doctrine. Don't give it away. Don't not use it wisely. That's what, and you're, when you're talking about Abraham, same exact thing. He took what he had and he used it wisely and God rewarded him for that, all right? Now, and it says to stand firm in, is, is in the, when you convince somebody of something, you're comfortable with talking about it and it's a profession of Christ, all right? Now, you go on beyond that and when it talks about the word faith, you're going to stand soundly in the faith. 
of a Christian profession, the faith professed. And these verses in Corinthians, Galatians, and Timothy, you can look at them and see how they put something together and say, stand in the faith, stand in the faith, stand in the faith. All right? Faith that you're standing is, is doctrines received by you and doctrines believed by you. Okay? And the Christian doctrine that you're going to most depend on is going to be the gospel. And the gospel is what? Christ came. Christ was on earth. Christ died. Christ was in the ground. And Christ arose. And Christ ascended to the Father. That's the gospel. Nothing else. Probably that's found in, in uh, chapter 15 also. It's the gospel. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Yes. See? According to doctrine. According to doctrine. According to doctrine. I don't know how to explain anything better to you than if you can't automatically come up with doctrine when somebody asks you a question, you need to go back and start studying more. You need to start reading more. You need to start holding in more. You need to start shoving more in your head. Because you don't want to have somebody ask you a sound question and go, uh, duh, 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 like Porky the Pig. That doesn't buy it. Okay? So that's pretty much what they're speaking of. Now, and it says... All that Christianity stands for is in Acts 6 7, which is the gospel. All right? And then I've also found a verse that was really nice. I didn't realize I had seen it before, but didn't pay attention to it. There's a verse in Acts 14 27 that talks about the door of faith being open to the Gentiles. That's your door. Okay? That has nothing to do with nation Israel. That is strictly a door for Gentiles. All right? It was very, very pleasant to find something like that. Now, what was that Acts who? Oh, sir. It's scribble on your notes there. I don't put it down anymore without scribble on a verse. That way it's easier to be member. All right? And then it uh, talks about quit being a man is what they're talking about. The, the term in my interlinear is play the man. Okay? It's very uh, old school language. Mm -hmm. Did I miss one? Did I miss faith? Stand in the faith. Stand in the faith. Yes. Stand. Oh, I just missed stand, didn't I? I'm sorry. Standing fast in the faith, adhering to it, professing it. No, I got that one. Which one did I miss? Faith, Christian profession. Am I down to I'm down to man? Man. Oh, sorry. Is that acceptable? Okay. No, no, no. That's all right. All right, to behave oneself with courage and wisdom of a man as opposed to a babe or a child in Christ. And also a woman, you know, PC garbage, but understand we're talking about a Christian and how they respond. Respond as a mature individual that has some wisdom stashed on the shelves and you are ready to use it bravely or courageously whenever necessary. All right, that's, that's how this is put together. It is also in the middle voice which is really neat because that means you get to help. Holy Spirit's going to be working with you. It takes your mouth to be courageous. It takes your mouth to disseminate wisdom. Holy Spirit can't do it for you. It can just put them in the head. All right? Quit signifies to make a man of. What did they tell all the kids that are being bad that are put into the service? I heard it with my brother. We're going to put you in there and they're going to make a man of you. Which somewhat helped. Okay. Well, why are they saying that? Somebody else is in control of you. They are going to teach you the items that you need to know to get through a particular situation. Be it battle. Be it walking with the Lord. When people call me and ask me questions about Scripture, how do I answer them? How can I answer them? Two ways. I can give them verbatim scriptures, which is fine, but if they don't have a method to, to take that and, and break it down and use it, I've got to know how my scripture experientially plays into my life and how I've fleshed it out over the years. Okay? That is you using yourself and being a man about it or being a mature Christian about it. The more you learn, the more responsibility is put on your shoulders to be able to help a younger Christian 
or an immature Christian, or even an ignorant Christian, get out of that condition and get them into the growing pattern. That is one of your job descriptions when you come to Christ. If you're a quick maturer, then you've got a lot of work ahead of you because he needs people that get there quickly to help the ones that don't get there so quickly. All right? And for you to have that, um, I can find nowhere where somebody doing what God told them to do does not exponentially heap the blessings on them and heap the confidence on them and heap the lack, of the, 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 the lowering of your anxiety, then, then I, I don't see that anywhere. It all comes with the package. You will be a very strong Christian if you function in your faith. It's basically what I'm um, I have also found that over the years, I'm going to find more chances to exhibit that by being in different places. Don't go places where you're always comfortable. If he impresses you to go somewhere that makes you, quote unquote, feel a little anxiety, then I can guarantee you you're headed in the right direction. Why? Because he said, I'm not going to send you anywhere that he doesn't do what? Prepare you for it. Okay. So you're crossing thresholds when you do that. You don't seem to realize that. There's, you're here, you say, well, I sure am comfortable here. Um, have you ever pushed anybody in the pool? <laughs> Remember how they were standing at the edge and they were just admiring the water and, and there was this little other de demon on your other shoulder and he said, oh, excuse me. Well, that's pretty much what the Holy Spirit does. Done that before, have you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Holy Spirit does when you need the nudge. Okay? He's very, very gracious to say, come on, I'll get you. All right? I mean, you look kind of weird floundering and flipping around and doing your thing, but it's there. All right? So, here we go. Strong is the last one. You need to be strong. It's a New Testament word that is passive only. Okay? And when I say passive only, I mean passive only. This is a term that has absolutely nothing to do with you lifting weights. It has nothing to do with you running miles. It has nothing to do with you changing your... You got one, okay. There's two of them just in case. <laughs> it has absolutely nothing to do with that. It has to do with the Lord seeing an individual that is watchful, discerning, being courageous, and saying, I'm going to put more effort into that individual, so I'm going to make them more confident I'm going to make them more readily able to use their, their, their information. I'm going to do all those things. It is to be strong, to make strong, to make grow strong. Okay? Anybody? It's, 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 yeah. It's the middle passive. How do you know it's only passive? Just from Thayer. That's the only reason. Because okay. nobody else had it but him. And I figure he's as far down the road as I can go without not understanding any of it. But that's why it, it is it, it, the middle passive is because it's tied to the be, the men part. And the middle part is you're going to be active. And as a result of you being active, as long as you're being strong, he has his part, which is to make you stronger. All right? And that's the nice part about it. And it's not just a strength that comes and goes like like Samson's, whenever he needed it, is it is a it's an established strength. Not only are you going to be strong now, you're going to have that same strength the next time you need it. Why? Because you're not waffling back and forth. You're just forward going, getting things done, and allowing the Holy Spirit to direct you in areas that you may not have done before. And as He directs you, one thing has to happen in those scenarios. God has got to hold up His end of the stick, which means. I'm going to make you stronger. I'm going to make you want to study my word more. I'm going to show you what the word means quicker. Okay? Those are the things that are wrapped up in that particular stretch of words. Okay? And the reason for it? Because Timothy needed it. Timothy was a mama's boy. Timothy needed a bump every now and again. And Paul would offer him help whenever he knew. If you know somebody that has waffle times, in their Christianity, and you do identify it, 
You're identifying it for you, not for them. I'll guarantee you they know it. All right, unless they're dumb as a stump. But they would very much like to have somebody come by and show them how to get over a threshold. All right? Or unless they take the word and twist it to suit the problems that they're having. Uh, That's what okay. was it, the scientific me, thing, me, the experiments? If you, go to, if you go somewhere looking with a, prem, a free established premise, yeah. you're what going to find all kinds of Kevin, evidence to what support it. it. What is it Kevin always tells you with scripture? Okay. Context, and don't go in with the pre preconceived ideas to what it means. That's right. He said there's pastors that have an idea and then they go find scriptures to make it fit their ideas. That's, what I'm to say. That's not the way the scripture's set up. Okay? But understand also that when you're doing that, if you've got an individual that's doing that, do yourself a favor, okay, and get any kind of information you can on self righteousness because that's all you're dealing with. Somebody that's really impressed with their own impression, okay? And when they are, they are easy to knock down. I mean, you don't have to be happy when you do it. Uh, sometimes you do, but not always. <laughs> but you can still, you need to. How many of you know how to be humble? How do you do it? Is there a pill you take? Go ahead. Get on your knees and pray. That'll work. Until you get out into public, then what are you going to do? Every time you feel like you need to be humble, you're going to crash onto the knees. And what are you going to do? How do you do it? Glory to God. Glory to God. That works good until they think you're nuttier. Then the next thing you know, you're shaving your head and putting a white outfit on and wandering around the airports. What are you going to do with that? Yeah. <laughs> Keep wondering if God told you to. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Let me explain something to you. Humbleness is something that comes out of what's in here. Okay? I don't want any glory for anything he's doing. You know why? I've read the scripture. There are a lot of bad things happen to people that steal his glory. All right? That is not a happy place to be. But I do like to be in a place where he blesses me because I recognize his glory and I give it to him. Sometimes readily. I don't know how to be humbled until I've been humbled. Okay, yeah, yeah. and that's a, that's a learning curve. I'll, I'll give you that one. But the thing of it is, is you can help people do that. You know how you do that? My son just changed jobs. He quit one job, and every time Josh quits a job, he's all nerved out inside, you know, and everything. So he calls us, and we walk him through it every time. But the thing about it is, is he said, you know, the Lord, he said, the Lord has really opened some doors. I said, you sure it was the Lord? He said, yeah, I couldn't find a knob. <laughs> and I mean, you don't know Josh. This is like a pit bull hanging on a rope in the backyard. I don't know how he got that. It's just, it's just, but at any rate, so he, he is identifying what the Lord is doing for him. That is a very big step in you staying in your position and letting God stay in his position. It's a phenomenal step. Okay. The last thing you want to do is pull any, anything that's glory going to God and, and you snagging a little bit of it because you need to stand in the sunlight for a little bit, that's not a good scenario and it's usually going to end up very badly for you. Okay? So, all right, where are we at now, boss? All right, you got no, notes. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. <laughs> Just in case. Go. Oh, yes, ma'am. I was just trying to lie. No, 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 no. Heaven's not. That's why we make extra, boss. I got one. That's all right. You can give that one to a neighbor. Oh, no. Hey, one of the things I noticed, uh, I came across in one of the lessons that God was trying to teach me. Mm -hmm. uh, he used two places out of the Bible, two different people. One of them was Peter's experience walking on the water. And the other one was the lady who was looking for Christ's blessings. And at first, he knew what was going on. but it, And so he drew her out by rejecting her, apparently. Okay. And saying the, the food, the bread goes to the children. Right. And But she said, yeah, but even the dogs. Don't get for the crumbs problem. from your table. I discovered something really important. Peter had an awful lot of faith. The problem was that his awful lot of faith was for him in the wrong God. His God wasn't big enough. 
on the other hand, and, and so Christ sort of got onto him about that. Sure. Oh, and he also <laughs> fell into the water. The other lady, her God was bigger because even though she was not a Jew, she had right. enough faith that God was big enough to deal with her to problem. deal with her and yes. that made a real impression how big is your God yeah you can have an awful lot of faith yeah but if you got a faith in but, a small God you're in trouble well but anybody ever looked through a telescope <clears throat> I don't have any problem with God that's big enough to do that right I mean I have got no problems asking him anything when I look out there and see all of that stuff not a clue. Well, that's true, but it's not an easy thing sometimes for a lot of people. Correct. To in the beginning, it isn't easy. That you got a God that's that Correct. Big. In the beginning, it isn't easy for them. It was easy after they got a hand one. Yeah, right. And it's that way for everybody. Okay. At twelve, I had no clue what I was stepping into. Okay. At sixty-five, I got a real good clue, and I have no desire to step out. Okay. So that's basically what it amounts to. All right, where are we at, boss? We uh, did all of 275 and 7 Barnhouse. Right, I'm so worried. And we're going to talk about Barnhouse. Barnhouse, okay, yes. Page 275. This is verse 4. No, verse 11 in chapter 4. He received the sign of circumcision, seal of righteousness, the faith which he had while uncircumcised, that he might be the father of those who believe, though they were uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. This is that little scenario where... Abraham was a Gentile when he came to Christ or came to God. And later on when the nation Israel was there, then they had the opportunity and they could do it too. And they could use Abraham as a pattern. And that's what they're talking about. Now, Barnhouse is one of the other 50s preachers that is Presbyterian preacher that was dead on. Period. The guy just... Uh, I don't know where everything started going south, but these guys back in that generation... All were pulling from the same book. All right? Barnhouse. Relentlessly, he, Paul, has pursued the argument that divine logic and has closed off every avenue of escape, leaving man bankrupt. All right? What are we talking about? Anybody that thinks circumcision is a way to salvation is headed for a wall at 90 mile an hour. Okay? But face to face with the love of God at the cross of Christ. The only option. She had a question. Oh, I'm sorry, you had a question. Oh, yes. uh, there's two different types of circumcision. Two different types of circumcision? Yeah, one like uh, when a baby turns eight. Correct. So a child turns yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one is uh, when, when you become a Christian. Okay, yeah. One is symbolic, if you want to call it that. One is physical. All right? The physical one's the one Abraham's talking about. But also, the physical one that Abraham had was a reminder to everybody that something had happened to his heart. His heart had been circumcised. His heart had been cut. Um, if you want to learn more about that type of stuff, go back and look at all the different, um, what do they call them? When you, when you put it on the altar, all the different sacrifices, okay? You'll, you'll always see something cut. You'll always see blood. You'll always see halves. All of these things are symbolic for nation Israel to get a handle on what Christ was going to do on the cross. Nowadays, physically you are circumcised at eight, eight, days, eight days, three days. I don't know what it is. Well, the sometimes Jewish they do it right people, out of the chute. The Jewish the hospital, people okay? do it. The Jewish people do it eight days, probably. Yes, in the but, hospital but the hospitals do it whenever you're in, yeah. in the neighborhood. Okay. So, but the thing about it is, with all of that, Jews do it because they have attached that circumcision to being saved. How would you sum erroneously, up, by the way? How would you sum up the meaning of physical circumcision as far as its symbolism? It's, would you say it's like God cutting away? The, the sinfulness in your life? Um, you can, but it's not even that. Find the verse that talks about the carved out without hands. So I got these things, these tidbits. I mean, I know it's not for us. It's not for us to be done. But understand, yeah, but, yeah. but here's, here's the deal. Since I'm, well, how, how much, what percentage Jew am I? 
Three. Three, okay. <laughs> that was a test. I can't remember it. <laughs> Because it's such odd information. Who knows? There's me. Okay. Is that good? 3%? Is that right? Yes. All right. You're so, going to have to enlighten me on that. So, no, what are you talking okay. about? <laughs> um, she, they did my um, ancestry.com ancestry thing. Oh. My DNA really? test. Yeah. Boy, were we how, shocked. What, how, how much Asian am I? 1%. Oh. I can't be a samurai then, probably. You've got 1%, Bobby. You've got 1%. Okay, here's the deal. I'm, if I'm a Jew, okay, I don't know what percentage you have to be, and I get the big C at eight days, okay, then I automatically have salvation. Okay? Who thinks that? According to <coughs> That is, hmm? According to? According to nation Israel. Oh. All right? This is the plan. That's what he's speaking of right here. All right? The problem is, Abraham and God had a conversation. They're going with circumcision being Jewish and salvation. Abe over here, on the other hand, was a Gentile when he made his trip with, with God. And when he did this, he was counted righteous. Okay? All right? And we know from further study, since he didn't have the New Testament, he didn't have Christ on the cross, we know what everything in the Old Testament was telling you. There's going to be a guy show up to hang on a cross that's going to take care of everything. So prior to that cross, you're going to have what? You're going to have this piece of paper with all the loot on it that's attributed to you. All your sins are going to be taken care of at the cross. All right, now, what we got going on from there is... I'm a Christian now. So instead of this being my way to salvation, this is the way to salvation. Only God said something specific about it. All right? He said, I am going to circumcise your heart. Okay? And when he said that, he meant that when Christ entered into me, okay, I now have the Holy Spirit, which they didn't have before. But the, the circumcision that they're speaking of is what this guy does for me. Okay? That's equivalent to this. Only I have complete faith in this. They have fake faith in that. This has become a position of self-righteousness. This is never a condition except for God's righteousness. Once again, the moment this takes place, my heart is circumcised, and you know from what I've drilled into your head, you are now plus R. You have been imputed with the righteousness of God. There is not one thing you can do to get rid of it. Okay? That's why when you guys have questions like that, understand something. I didn't do anything for it, so I can't do anything to lose it. Okay. In my studies, you're touching on one of the forms of nearly a dozen forms that pride oh, yeah, shows yeah, its yeah, head. Yeah, there's, there's more ways of pride than... And uh, it was summed up. God gave Jeremiah to sum it up in chapter 17. The heart is deceptive above all sure. things and desperately evil. We, Who can know it? Yeah. And the thing of it is, is, please understand something. This took place even though that's true. So you, that's, not a, that's not put on your chart anymore. That's the nice thing about it. Okay? That's the beneficial part. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you mentioned that every time you know you get saved or any, it, the blood is the mm -hmm. symbolic. So in Genesis 15 is when he made the covenant with Abraham. Correct. And they, they did sacrifice the animals. So there was a blood covenant before, Correct. prior to the circumcision, which is in 17. Okay. So there is still a blood See? covenant going on, even though that hasn't happened that the Jews say is really Correct. the salvation. Correct. Okay. Now, there was a blood sacrifice before then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, all that I'm was, telling you is uh, the story Abraham. doesn't change. Man tries to change it, but that doesn't work. It still gets fleshed out the same way. He has a plan. The plan is this, and the plan is going to always be this. It is it's never all, going to go away. It's all. Now it's a. Let's see what the B word. It's works. Um, 
works is what, yeah, yeah, you can, you can say that this little deal right here, yeah, yeah, it's the same thing as works over here because works is the law and the law has no place, yeah, there is there. no law, okay, yeah. over here at all. It's whose works. Correct. And the cross, all that before that is. Exactly. Yeah. But the problem is, if you don't understand that, and you're on that chart over there, you are going to be one worn out son of a pup trying to do all the stuff you need to do to make things work out right. Well, that's, that's Whereas when you relax, get in the ever-loving hammock, <laughs> abide in Christ, you don't have a problem. You can have the missus or the mister bringing you a mint jewel pen, whatever the heck you want to drink while you're hanging in the hammock. You're not going to worry about anything else. What's coming next for my drink? Please understand that. Okay? Bobby, there's a really good verse in Colossians. Right, just what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, chapter 2, verse 9. For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form, and in him it has been made complete. And he is the head over all, rule and authority. And in him you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands and the removal of the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. There. Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da -da -da. <laughs> Do you see what we're saying? And please, if, if you didn't get anything out of that verse, get the in him part. Okay? In him, in him, in him. It ain't you. Okay? Hang on to that with both hands. Now, it says, <coughs> excuse me, divine logic has closed off every avenue of escape, leaving man bankrupt, but face to face with the love of God and Christ and peace, where God is willing to declare an ungodly man. You and me, okay, to be righteous on the grounds of the satisfaction that was provided at the cross, at the death of his son. Once again, a sacrifice. Once again, blood involved. Once again, it was an hour showing of what took place behind the cross. Okay? It was an hour showing the cross was nothing but the Ark of the Covenant hanging on a cross. That's all it was. You're looking, when you're looking at Christ on the cross, you're looking at the mercy seat in action. Every time. Okay? It never goes away. Nobody can change that. They can tell me it was, I, Joy Behar thinks I'm crazy. Okay? Well, I would rather be crazy in God's world than sane in hers. Okay? So that's where you're that's really where you're at as far as all this goes. So now, and here we go, and it says, and here you're gonna start with the physicality of it, and a sign. Okay. I know. The reason the only reason I'm doing it is because of this. Right here. They're going with the sign. They're putting a dip. Um I'm trying to think of a word that you can define a couple of different... Okay. Uh, you remember the word when you used to say gay? <clears throat> what did it mean in the 30s? Lively. 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 Yeah. Better turn off the recorders. Spirit. I'm sorry. Better turn off the recorders. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to go PC here. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Now, what, what happened after that? What was gay maybe in the 50s? Did it change much? No, I don't think it did. Okay. You're leading me up to a very, what appears to me, a very, very obvious question. Okay. In whose weird mind did they decide that the word gay should be the word chosen to try to make a smelly thing into something acceptable. How did it get to be to use that word to know. represent homosexuality? I have no clue. Yeah. I mean, it I did know. somewhere along the way. Who did that and why? I, I, I don't know. I mean, the thing of it is, is I don't even really care. I, I don't use. I, when was the last time I used the word gay? Just now. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't use it. Why? They've destroyed the word. Yeah. Okay? 
So don't, uh, I'm not worried about that. I'm just talking about here's the, here's the program. Well, the same thing is done with, with this right here. A sign is being used for something. It says something here, and then they've distorted it to where it means something down here. Bad scenario, but that's how it is. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, and they also took the rainbow, and now it's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. let me, let me give you a better one. You just tell just, me Just so you know, I'm going with the rainbow that's over up around the throne, and it's green, and it's 100, it's 360 degrees. Right. You can have all the colors. Okay. It doesn't change me taking a picture of a double rainbow either. All right. I don't slap my phone around after I do it. All right. So, just so you know. So all I'm saying is you can see how they twist this up. So, but here it is. The sign that he had was the foreskin hitting the ground. The moment the foreskin hit the ground, he was plus R in God's eyes as a Gentile, not as a Jew. All right? And it says he received instantaneously without deserving or earning, he got potential capacity. Well, yes. he, he was already plus R. Yeah, but the thing of this is this is plus R as nation Israel. So he, because he changed yeah. to a Jew. Okay, he, so yeah, that which so made, made Israel plus R. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? I'm sorry. No, I didn't mean to mess up the neighborhood. Okay. And the thing of it is, is what happened from that point on, his capacity for maturity is going to be exponentially enhanced. Okay? Um, it did not change him. All right? He was still a sin nature filled guy. But he had changed his mindset. Okay. Circumcision did not make him saved by the way that they were considered to be saved. No, the circumcision did not make him by saved. By their other Correct. ceremonies. Which is, which is why she was wise to tell me. Because you have to understand, when the big C happened, he was already saved. He was saying, God, I'm, gonna, I, I'm going with you. I'm going to do this. And then later on down the road, when the circumcision took place, what was it for? You can equate it to baptism. It's an outward... It's example of something that was going to take place inside. Go ahead. The creation of the fourth race. Correct. Yes. Exactly. And the big C took place because they were going to have a new nation. Mm -hmm. And the new nation was going to have a father. And the father was going to say one thing. I am the same as, what did what did uh, Joshua say? As for, is, was it him? As for me, as for me in my house. house. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to serve God. Okay. That's the exact same thing the circumcision had for him. And he... As we get into this in chapter 4, you are going to be astounded what clarifies at why he put this together like this. What clarifies I mean, chapter, yeah, all of that up for me? Five, chapter 5. What, what do we want I'm working on? What clarifies that yeah. up to, for me is the fact that it makes it much simpler. It's because Abraham was considered righteous in God's mind by trusting God. Yeah, exactly. That's all he had. Same with us. Okay. And please understand something. I told you before, do you know what his job was? Abraham's. You talking about Abraham. Abraham. Prior to, prior to salvation, he was a tender of the moon god's temple. Yeah. Yeah, he was a real heavy-duty idolater. And he was an idolater with zero gain. All right? Which zero is probably, gain. Yeah, he wasn't getting anything out of it. Oh, just like the Thessalonians, they weren't getting anything out of their idol worship either, so they bailed on it when Paul hit town and they heard, heard the truth, they jumped on it with both feet, all right? So, it talks about the, the potential capacity, all right? Validation of the integrity of God became a Jew in the circumcision. New nation born, okay? New race, yeah, new race, totally new. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you'll notice, they actually have physical characteristics. Right? So the, the big gene guy, the gene pool guy in heaven, what did he do? He mutated enough genes to make them look like a specific race. They don't look like anybody else. Not to mention they gave them these little black hats. Okay? So there's always neat stuff in there. I can get it. I'm just going to be a little black spot around right there. Could you do me a favor and uh, dis, uh, unload me from the confusion about this uh, hat? Because in the Old Testament, God told the men that they were not supposed to worship Him. Right, which is why they covered everything up. Yeah. How did it get to be the opposite? 
the men. Yeah. <laughs> they, they wanted to be, they wanted somebody to know. Why did the Hadesic Jews do what they do with the squiggly beard hair and the quickly curls? Why? Oh. They want to be identified. Okay. Self it's an identification. Thing. Yes, self gratification. That's all there is. Yes, ma'am. So they, they became a new race and a new nation, but they kind of distorted it and made the nation more important than the race. And then along comes Paul, and by race, he's a Jew, but nationality, he's a Roman. Correct. And so he kind of fit into both <laughs> and, and distorted it and went back to the original what it is. Correct. And then religion, instead of being Jewish, he ends up being Christian. Correct. So there's three different things to differentiate. And them. the bad thing so about that is they burned a lot of years, yeah. and in all sincerity, they lost their client nation status because of that program right there, putting the nation above the race. Okay. And it's so it's just, it's a, a tough scenario. A terrible use of yeah, uh, arrogant, arrogance. But, I mean, I'm not, I'm not that unhappy about it because that gave us a shot at the program that was a long time coming. So I'm not, you know, they'll, they'll, get, they'll get over it, okay? So, at any rate, it talks about a seal. Remembrance, token, ritual, mark. Integrity of God never welches on an obligation. Um, has God ever told you he's going to do something like he told Abraham? Might have told you he's going to heal you. Give me any indication. Okay, all right. I'll go with that. He said, I'm going to use you somehow. Well, understand something. With all of this stuff that's going on with what you see here, it's the exact same thing. He said, he's got something, a plan, and Abe's going to be part of the plan. And Abe can do one thing to check it out every now and again. Do me a favor. Go look at the heavens. Now, I need you to keep that in your mind as we get into the next chapter. He told a man that had just had an illicit affair with his concubine or whatever the heck she was and generated a kid that was never going to be beneficial to him and he took God at his promise and took a few years to get ironed out and mature and in doing so he did one thing, stayed with the plan and stayed with the faith. All right. Learn to say no. It will augment. Here's what I like more than any of it. Be of more use to you than being able to read Latin. He could have said no. Okay? But at the time, he was just as desperate as his wife was. She was desperate for a different reason, but it was desperation. Who was the second one that did that very same thing, got into that amount of trouble? Doing it. There was at least two people in the Bible that did that. One was, there was a second one. Jacob. Right. I remember Jacob. Jacob. Who? Jacob. Now, Jacob. If they oh, hold, Jacob. If they hold. Talk about Jacob and, not, yeah. and, and working for one woman and not yeah. there and then getting the other one and then having a whole truckload of them. Yeah. If they hold their scriptures above all things, and he was one of their favorite people to look back on, how come they didn't look at the fact that he did that and screwed everything up? And, and, and they still did it. Please understand something. There is no way to not be human, and there's no way not to function with the sin nature, short of being in Christ. It is always on the warpath, right? It never gives it away. And what did he tell him? He gave him a promise, and you're going to find out how hard he hung on to that promise again and again and again. We talk about names, what they mean, and that kind of stuff. And it says here, remember it's a token? He said, of the righteousness, reality, blessing, integrity of God delivers plus R. You are plus R here, plus R here, plus R here, plus R everywhere. Never goes away, right? And then from that, you got the faith. What, we, uh, what's he, what did Abe have faith in? Not what you have faith in, by the way. What did he have faith in? That God was going to do it. Now, why did he have that faith? Hadn't seen it. We weren't told. We aren't told, but we also do know one thing. It's something God did to Abraham. Abraham did nothing to receive it. Important, important, important. So who was Abraham dealing with? He, he, he was who was Abraham with dealing with? He was dealing with Yahweh. He was dealing with God. And what did God tell this human right here? I have got a test kitchen coming up. 
you're going to be the test kitchen, and you're going to put that test kitchen to work over the centuries, and as that test kitchen comes out, they are going to do one of two things. They are going to run from me and hate me, or they're going to lift me up and call me glorious. Anything different with a Christian? What does America think of Christians right now? Please understand it's no different. Same program. Yeah. And I've got a I've got a thing to get putting together for Christmas, the way Satan tried to thwart Christmas. He was a busy guy. He was a busy guy from, from the garden on all the way to Christ with all the different versions of how he was going to mess something up. It's going to get he worse. just, I cannot imagine how many no gifts he gets. <laughs> okay? Because he is a screw. He's on the night. It's right. going to get yeah. worse. He's going to get so, into uh, Revelation. Anyway. Because it said that, uh, <laughs> because it said that uh, people are going to get so bad, they're going to think they're doing God a favor by killing us off. Oh, yeah. And that's going to be their biggest Christmas right there is when they kill off those two the two guys in the streets and then they go exchange Christmas presents for it with everybody because they killed the two the yeah. two prophets. Yeah, that's another program. It's good. Where's that at? I'm sorry? That's in uh, Revelation. Revelation probably, I would say, 12 or 13, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. Look for the two witnesses that get killed in the streets and then look at the old party they have afterwards. Where they ex it actually says they exchange gifts. Yeah. By the way. The two witnesses is in Romans or Revelation 11. 11. Okay. Romans 11. All right. See, there's all kinds of stuff stuck in that book that you just haven't got a clue about. You know. So at any rate, there you go. So talking about the faith that he has, and this is faith he he, he exercised. And understand, his faith only was represented by him submitting to the circumcision. Nothing else. All right. I mean, he wasn't a baby. I'm pretty sure that the memory didn't fade that fast. Okay? So he did it, and he did it exactly for the reason that he was to do it, and that's because he had faith in a God. And he said, wow. In the uncircumcision. So what happened was he was plus R, un. Okay? And that's all they're talking about. And here it is. For him to be the father. Okay? Static present. This happened. What are you talking about? Static present. Abraham, right here, forever is going to be called the father of nation Israel. I mean, any Jewish person you know, we talked about it before. How do they identify themselves? It's, it's even more than that, though, because it's many nations. So I mean, all of his kids had different. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah. The one but, that we care about. Right. Jewish. But what? How do they start it? Oh, by the way, we belong to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I mean, that's in their sentence somewhere along the line. Why? Because it branched off. It's you important. Need the, the yes. Right, the right lineage. Exactly. And if anybody that's really ancestry free besides Kathy, okay, it's the Jewish nation. My sister. All right. <laughs> See, there's others among us. Says, oh, okay. All right. So there's other nuts out there too. I've been doing it since 1977. Anyway, so who believes? The one believing. All right. So the one believing is the one that's going to be the father of all through uncircumcisions. They are not circumcision. During the act of circumcision, here's a nice thing. Set up, in long, set up long before Christ came onto the scene. Um, I'm running out of room. Here's the cross. Okay? I'm running out of time, too, dear. So. Am I? Okay. Yes. Here's the cross. If you want to call this uh, circumcision central, you could. Okay? You really could. Before, before we end, okay, so you said those, those circumcisions are two different things, right? You're mm -hmm. talking about two different things. Yes, yeah, physical and spiritual. One's with a baby and the other one one's with a, with a heart. Christian? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. With a Christian. Oh, okay. um, and the reason they do that is is for commonality. Anybody that knows Jewish history is going to know what circumcision is. Anybody that comes to Christ in, in Gentile version is going to know about that. Why? Because that has always been the story that came with Abraham. The whole shooting match started with circumcision. So they're going to hunt it out and seek it out. When you go and learn what you got out of the circumcision of Abraham, you find out that you got everything Abraham got because your heart was circumcised by the Holy Spirit when you accepted Jesus Christ and he entered into you. All right? That's why they do it. Commonality helps people understand over the years. All right?
Everybody knows what happened at the Red Sea. Okay? But what they don't pay attention to is that's one of the first times that nation Israel left somewhere identified as nation Israel, and there was a whole bunch of them that weren't real happy about being identified as nation Israel. No, they weren't happy about it at all. The mixed multitude? I mean, they are all bent out of shape. There's all kinds of people left with that grudge. If you, if you would have married a, a, a nation Israel person, and they shipped out, and you took off, and you left your family behind, and you left good regular food behind. They didn't think about all the nasty work they had to do, but they did all of that. And you're out there in the middle of the desert, and you're looking, you know, something's not working right here. I got a problem. They're blind to what God does. Okay? I would have I would have been walking around for 40 years going, did you see that, 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 that red, red sea split? Did you see that red sea split? I wouldn't give a rip about the rest of the stuff. And then the next thing, when the Red Sea starts to dull up a little bit, what happens? Did you see him smack that rock and get water to come out? Did you see the flipping quail coming through at three feet high? No, we had to just knock them down with sticks and have good meat with our manna? No, these people are telling me, I'm tired, I'm hot, I can't do this. Let's go back and have leeks in Egypt. <laughs> Did you forget the stories about making mortar with your blood? Those stories kind of get lost in the mix somewhere. Humans so you see what I'm saying? Humans have so, selective memory. Right, exactly. And, and so that's what he's talking about. That's why I say circumcision is a central point that can be used by everybody. Everybody knows what it is. You really can't dink it up. It is what it is. Now you can mess it up after the fact and, and, and do all that, but you can't do it any other way. Okay? So... All right, if I'm out of time, Mrs. Adams. You're not out of time. You have a few more minutes. Oh, Keep going. oh forgive me. All right. I'm, I'm trying to speed you up. Oh, is that So we get to chapter no, 5 before four. Christmas. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you're trying to get done in 2028 instead of 2029. Is that what it is? Okay. So at any rate, flip the page. It says to the steps of the uncircumcision. What are we talking about? Ranks. <coughs> ranks and ranks and ranks and ranks and ranks of the uncircumcision. Tons and tons and tons and tons of Gentiles are going to come to Christ because of Abraham's circumcision. I flipped the page to 279. Did I skip a page? Oh, I'm excited. I mean, I want you to hurry. I want you to speed it up. Is that too fast? 2027. I'm sorry. Well, that was exciting to me. Okay, never mind. Oh, okay, we're back into Allie's neighborhood. Be reckoned. Oh, bummer. All right, reckon. What are we talking about? Your heart circumcision is written down upstairs. All right? Is there anything, is there anything you can do to get it unwritten? No. Nothing at all. Okay? And understand, when something is reckoned, you don't mess with it. It is against the law to doctor the books. Am I correct? <laughs> okay. All right, that is true today as it was then, as it is in heaven. There is nobody messing with the books. You know how I know that? Because when Satan went up to talk about Job, what did God say? I would like you to consider my servant Job. How did he know all about Job? Other than he knows everything. Everything he was doing was written down. How do we know that? tells us about books and other books and the book of life in the Revelation. Understand it is written down. You don't talk about jots and tittles in the Bible without somebody scribbling something down. There's a head jot angel and a hot head tittle angel in heaven somewhere. Okay? And it was written down long before he even started right. creating anything. I can guarantee you it was. Because and you know what is the neatest part about all of that? Do you know who is surprised by all that? The angels. They're not omnipotent. They're not omnipresent. They don't have all that. They're coming across all these jot and tittles and they're going, oh, look what Allison's going to do today. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Right. But you see what I'm saying? And he said, look, we've gotten to this page right here and look, Dad, got it. We're going to sell John's house in one day. <laughs> and they all go, oh! <laughs> and God says, I knew it all along. Yeah. See what I'm saying? One of the reasons I know that that's so is because in the Bible it says that Christ was already figured as slain 
before the foundation Bingo. of the world. Exactly. And that's what they're talking about. So as you're working a plan, understand angels are just aghast at it. They're just all tickled with it. That's why they're happy when he says, Lord, I want to, you know, I'm impressed to go home. Lord, I'm putting my hand on, on everything that you do. I want you to be in it. And here I want you to take my house. And I want you to get rid of it. And here it is gone. Now, when that happens, grab it with both hands because it doesn't always happen. That's why they call them miracles, not regulars. Okay? <laughs> not that? Just understand that. It's important. Why? He needs to have it. It's something that means something to him. It means something to us to hear it. Okay? That's where all this is leading. That's what all this is reckoning and talking about. We'll get to righteousness. We'll start with righteousness after that. Is that acceptable? We'll start right there, righteousness. And then we'll jump back down into a little translation of it. Understand something, too, if you, if you can, with all of this. This doesn't look organized. Because that's me. Okay? That is in perfect order in heaven. Perfect order. Organized thoughts. It comes out perfectly. And then he has to give it to me. And he's going, oh my God, here we go again. So, but it is all because the information that he puts there, it's important to all of us, all right? I got Ken, James, Mrs. Helton, Amy, Anne, Tom, Claudia, Gracie, Pam, Kay, and Don's dad, Don Freeman's dad, staff and services, folks out of town. I know Lo Lois is still gone, Carol's gone, and I don't know who else might be chasing around. Just if you got them, scribble them on your list if you want so we can remember them. Pray for the president as he's overseas trying to square away a mess that's been going on for a long time. I, I'm thinking the rain prayer must be hung up with whatever angel was helping Daniel. <laughs> okay? So. I keep putting it up there, and hopefully it'll it'll ease up a little bit. Um, I have what six, seven inches of rain in the front yard, and the dog can lay down in the water on the dock because the dock is a foot under water. So, but there are tarpon. I have seen tarpon turning in the ponds. I don't think that's normal, but they're there. All right. I put Al's folks in here. Mom is in her new home, prayerfully getting adjusted and pray for us. We have to help a lot because she is uh, prone to wanting to get up because her mind doesn't tell her she can't. Okay, so just pray for that. I put Dave's mom on here and I put Ken still doing his thing. Coworker Rich is a friend of Ken's that has respiratory problems from mold and mildew in his house. Um, we pray for him because that can be bad stuff. Keep my sister Teresa in your prayers for her medical situation. And Marianne, Lynn's not well right now, and Bonnie, a friend with cancer. All right, we got Glenn in here with Lois. Helma and Jim hires. You're gonna travel? Did she put that in? It's, um, it, actually, it's Barbara. She Barbara, fell okay. Yesterday. Okay, all right, oh, cool. Did. did you hear what she said? She, she fell. fell. She hurt her foot really bad. So we don't know what it is yet. Did I can't get her to the doctor. And she needs to be well on the 18th because she's taking a, a whole bunch of people on a tour in Ireland and England. So it's, oh, that's right. She was yeah. supposed to go. So we need prayers. <laughs> Lots of prayers. Okay. Wow. All right. Well. You want Bobby to come down and tell her she's got to go to the doctor? Yeah. He'll do it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have him straight now. I'll let tell him. Get, yeah. Girl. yeah. She and her husband will drag her off to the doctor. <laughs> I'll go with you to give her a hug. Okay. <laughs> Just a trick, you know. Okay. All right. Um, Josh, my son, has quit Weatherford and now he's working for another company that is out of Texas. He's going down now to Texas to get um, orientation, pick up, pick up some equipment to go back to North Dakota to drill wells. So, anyway. so we were praying for a new job for him. That wasn't the one we were praying for because we wanted him to come home. Um, but, but that's not what the Lord intended, yeah, and he's happy with it. We got some problems too. Yeah. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> Julie's still looking, and Tansy wants a house. She's tired of being at home. Brandon, healing as a friend of theirs, is healing from alcoholism and depression. So, at any rate, other good news. Um, 
mangoes are doing good, onions are doing good, tomatoes are doing good. Um, anything else? Chickens aren't too happy because they've had wet feet for a few days. Other than that, that's the best good news we got. All right? You yes. had a new flower blooming. A new flower? Oh, yes, the one from Lori. You sent a picture with purple, the purple ones with the crazy. You sent it to everyone. You sent it to everyone. Said you're crazy. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I was I was given some um, passion flowers, and I and I finally got them. A couple to go. of years ago, and you kept them. I know, but they weren't happy where they were. Everybody's seen them. Oh, everyone has not seen it. Yeah, oh, Sheree has it. Oh, yeah, Sheree's yeah, yeah. got it. Oh, yeah, Sheree's got it. Yeah, Sheree's got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I sent it to her because I know she needs to have some flowers around her house. But see? Yeah, pretty cool. And the butterflies come to them. That's always a good thing. All right? Just so you know, that's what it looks like. All right? Okay. I was hoping to put out some kind of good eating fruit, but I haven't seen that yet, so. But at any rate, all right, anything else? Have we done burned enough time? All right, let's pray and I'll turn you loose. Thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for your word, for the way you put it together, and for the way it gets put on the board. Sometimes I apologize, but at any rate, it's yours. And as we do that, Lord, we give you the honor and glory for it. Allow us to leave this room and live our lives according to your plan and eliminate ours at the beginning of every day. And in doing so, we are the righteous man that you ordered the steps of. And we thank you for that. Be with the ones that aren't here. Here for ones that we talk of, of the medical conditions, Lord, because we can't do it, and we just put it in our hands. We want you just like we do. And above everything, Lord, I pray that you just allow us to continue to study your word, for it always to be interesting, and to always draw us closer to you. In Christ's name, amen. amen.